I'm in the workshop today sorting out the fuel tap on the Oronka. When I started doing the permit work the other week, I peered in the tank and noted that the fuel strainer, which is inside the fuel tank and attached to the, um, bottom, the top of the fuel tap, was uh, looking rather weather beaten. It was all bent over. And it's actually got a, quite a big split in it. And uh, when I opened up the gas escalator, well, I took the bowl off it, that had a few bits of debris in it as well. So I drained the tank and took the tap out and decided to change this. I had a go at making a gauze up. I tried to roll your own like a Rizzler, but the, uh, the gauze I had, or well, the mesh I had, wasn't really quite fine enough. And I couldn't really solder up the joint very easily. I could sort of bind it together with wire in various places and it would probably work. But I found a fellow on eBay who sells these. He calls himself Seagull Restorer and uh, very useful they are. Three eighths, um, they're very, very thin mesh. So I decided to fit one to the tap. And until about five minutes ago, it actually looked like the one on the right. But unfortunately, I just managed to bend it slightly. It hasn't done any damage. I was, um, I've just sort of had to squeeze it back into shape, but it's not split or anything. They are very, very uh, vulnerable to being damaged. And I think this one was damaged probably by me with the fuel dipstick. So I've made a couple of new fuel dipsticks as well. They're down at the airfield. So I can put them in at a slight angle and not bash that every time I stick um, a fuel stick in the tank. Anyway, I bashed it because I was wrestling, trying to wrestle the old cork back in which has been soaking in petrol for a couple of weeks but it didn't work so I I made a new cork this taps rather nice it's uh, an Enox tap Enox is stone backwards so I guess they were made by someone called stone or the stone company or something two position and the fuel actually goes through the sort of tap handle interesting it goes in one hole down and out the other one so actually from the tank point of view the fuel comes out of here through the handle and in there and to the engine or to the gas escalator so when the tap is in that position it is on and when it's rotated through 90 degrees it's off because that's actually a, a blind hole it's just a, a dimple machined in and nothing more so I'm just gonna stick the uh, new gasket and I just made a new cork gasket using wad punches and some cork that I had the thickness isn't too uh, fussy because of course you can just do the nut up on the back a little bit more so I'm just going to lubricate the gasket and uh, then put the tap together. The cork's now smothered in Vaseline so I can uh, assemble the tap. It will absorb petrol of course the, uh, the cork will absorb petrol but uh, the uh, Vaseline is good for now and uh, means the tap runs smoothly without um, binding at all on the on the face of the, of the cork. It sort of swells up with petrol and then uh, really creates quite a tight seal. So I'll just run the nut up. It doesn't need to be stupidly tight because uh, as I say that it sort of swells and takes up the, the slack. I can't quite remember where the hole is for the split pin that's it maybe another half turn let's just try that so not quite enough one more half turn around with this off camera it's about there I might not have it just in the right place of course as soon as I turn the camera off the pin went straight in um, it's all very cynical about filming everything you know it's a sure way of ending up uh, making a mess anyway I'll just bend it over and the job's done I gave the air a bit of a blowout with the airline but I had a bit of a brainwave and I made this kind of ejector I've already tried using it if I put the airline in there I get quite a suction here so I can actually use it just to clean out the bottom of the tank I know the tanks dry inside it's been sitting for about three weeks 
but this way it sucks up any bits that are floating around in the bottom corners of the tank and blows them harmlessly out. I thought about sticking the hoover in there, but of course Michael Faraday had mad enough hair and he only played with electricity. Combine that with a bit of petrol vapour and heaven only knows what would happen. I've just refitted the fuel tap, that's it in the middle there you can see. I'm just about to shine the torch on it now, there you go. So I screwed it into the tank with some sealant. I put the extendy arm on it that goes to the instrument panel and the fuel pipe. So I'm just going to tighten everything up and then uh, put some fuel in the tank and wait for it to leak. This is the gascalator bracket. When I bought the aeroplane it had this little uh, metal bowl and as you can see I can rattle it around. It's a really bad fit and uh, I suppose it probably had a glass bowl originally, whatever this was from, probably stolen off a rotavator or something. Anyway, one side of the casing was slightly damaged, it was slightly stove in. It's only made of kind of pot metal. So um, I didn't like the fact you had to take it off to uh, check the fuel anyway, or check the fuel sample. So I found a suitable chunk of alley in the workshop and turned up a, a new gascalator bowl that has a Curtis valve on it as well. So I can actually open the top cowling and then just carefully reach in and take a fuel sample like so before I fly, which is quite sensible. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than was on there. There's a very fine gauze filter that goes in the top of the gas collator, which I'll push in now. It should stay up there of its own accord. Yes, it does. Make sure it doesn't jump out. And I've just cut out a new um, cork seal as well. That was the one that came out. The problem with these cork seals is if you take them out and do nothing with them, they shrivel up like a like putting a slug on a hot paving slab. Who could be so cruel? And uh, I put it in a jar of petrol along with the other seal, and that was probably a bit too enthusiastic because it actually it's swollen up. It's quite a lot bigger than the new one I've just cut out. It's grown by about an eighth of an inch. I probably just sort of left it moist, maybe rubbed it with Vaseline and uh, and um, it probably wouldn't have expanded, it probably just would have stayed as was. Um, I quite like Vaseline, I'm not Chris Pincher, I don't play for his team, um, but it is very useful around the aeroplane of course and uh, it's sort of, well it's waterproof, it's not messy, it doesn't matter if it gets on a clothes, it doesn't matter if it actually goes in your mouth even, unlike grease and things, so it's actually quite safe stuff to use. So that's why I like it. Anyway, I might just give this a little uh, a little coat of Vaseline on each side. Um, so rub some in each side. I'm sure other MPs like it too. And uh, put it in place. And put the gas later on. Put it round like so. What we're going to have to do in a moment is a fuel flow check. So once I've put some fuel in, I've got some clean fuel. Actually, all the fuel I drained out went through a chamois leather once I took it home, so it's properly clean. So I'm going to put in a few litres and then uh, do a leak check, make sure the tank's not leaking, make sure the tap's not leaking, this isn't leaking, and then take the pipe off the carburetor. We'll have a look at the carburetor in a moment. This is carburetor. It's an Amal carburetor made by Amal of Birmingham. It's a 189-100. They only made a few of them just for these engines, so they probably only built about 100 or so. I've got several floating around. They were particular to these Jap engines. The Aronka generally had a um, Stromberg NAS2, which I have, I have got a Stromberg. It's going on my Praga engine. And it weighs a little more than this. I did try it some years ago. It did give about 20 RPM more, but uh, it wasn't really worth messing around with. This here's the advanced retard mechanism uh, for the magnetos. You'll see in that previous film, the magnetos advancing and retarding. And as I move the throttle, that's closed. If I push it to forward, fully forward to open, it pulls this forward using this sector plate and pulls the magnetos to advance. It's all a bit Heath Robinson, but it works. 
this is the choke. It normally sticks out through the cowling. On is out and uh, off is in when the thing's pushed into the cowling. It also comes off at full throttle with this arm, but it usually rich cuts or wants to rich cut like hell when you do that, so uh, it doesn't really work that well. You just have to lean in behind the propeller and push it in and try not to stick your scalp or your arms through the propeller arc. It's quite a good carburetor. It's very light. It's made of some kind of pot metal. And this is the air feed to that uh, nice air um, box that is on the exhaust. I thought years ago, and you might think the same if you're somebody who messes around with aeroplanes, that it was a bit of a poor show feeding it hot air all the time. So I messed around for days and made a hot cold air box and I tried it and it made no difference whatsoever. So I think the limitations with the engine are from its 5.2 to 1 compression ratio rather than feeding it hot or cold air. There's about 6 litres of fuel in the tank and I haven't spotted any leaks yet so it's now time to do a fuel flow check. I'd like to see at least 15 litres an hour um, which is by my simple mathematics a litre in four minutes. So I've got my measuring jug here, I've got the pipe disconnector, I'm going to turn the fuel on and uh, pack my watch at the same time and we'll see what happens. Well, there's fuel coming through. It's a very exciting four minutes. I'll get some paint out next for those of you who are a bit too thrilled by this. You've been spared live time, but it's come up to two and a half minutes and uh, not far off a litre already. So I reckon it's about a litre every three minutes and that's with a nearly, nearly empty fuel tank. So. A litre every three minutes is 20 litres an hour. The regulation requires for gravity feed systems 150% of your maximum or full throttle fuel flow. Well, I reckon the fuel throttle fuel flow for this, golly as a tongue twister, is about two and a half gallons an hour. And so 20 litres an hour is at least four gallons an hour. So I think we'll call that a winner. That's about it. The fuel flow check was successful. And I've really just got to go around wire locking everything. Just before we go though, so I'll just show you the uh, float. That's the float that goes in the fuel tank. Originally it had an epoxy coated cork, but I don't like epoxy floating around in fuel tanks. It always goes funny and then goes all yellow and horrid. And uh, I made that out of shim material, just wrapped around a broomstick, wired up with copper wire and a uh, whole lot soldered together. You can do it with a blow lamp, don't need an oxycetylene or anything. Very easy, just plumbing stuff. Get shim off the internet. It works a treat. The other thing is the uh, fuel dipper rod. Again, some time ago when I previously had fuel out of the tank, I calibrated a, a stick. Now, if you're making a fuel dip stick, they're much more successful if you paint them black. Paint them matte black, and then when you put them in the fuel and pull them out, you get a really definite line. I think I sprayed these satin black, they're just wooden sticks. And you'll notice they've got quite nice numbers pressed in. You can get number stamps in all manner of places. I think these came from home base. My daughter bought them for me for Christmas, which was a very thoughtful gift, and very useful. The lightest tap with a, not even a hammer, just to uh, push them into the wood and you end up with a really nice dipstick. Anyway, that's about it. And more nonsense another day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.